You can do better than that. Our God is great, and he is greatly to be praised. Let me ask you, Father's House, has God done anything for you today that nobody else could have done even if they tried? If God did something for you today that nobody else can do, then you ought to do what nobody else can do for you, and that's give your God. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, he is worthy to be praised. Before you sit down, I want you to give a thunderous applause to our bishop who, who's in Africa preaching right now. Pray so, you can, so he can hear it. They treated him so well. Um, I asked him, I said, Bishop, how is Nigeria? He said, I didn't go to Nigeria. He said, I went to Wakanda. <laughs> but they, 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 they just rolled out the red carpet, and the pastor has, uh, has been texting me saying, is the bishop happy? Is the bishop happy? They just rolled out the red carpet. Um, and I, I expressed to Bishop, I said, um, you know, we know you in America, but the, the nation knows you as a father. And um, it's amazing to see what God is continuously doing in his life. He's an amazing man of God, an amazing mentor. And in his stead, standing here today is uh, just my second favorite woman on earth. I got to tell you that my first is my wife, Felicia. Come on, wave, baby. That's my wife, Felicia. Second favorite lady on earth is Mother Jakes. Come on, y'all praise God for Mother Jakes. She is amazing. I often tell her, God gave me a wife, but you gave me a woman. And I remember the day you met my wife and her spirit uh, was inextricably connected to yours. And we often mention your name because you represent a fork in the road um, for our life. And 12 years ago, I met her. And um, it seems as if uh, we've reimagined ourselves because of your hand on her life. And I thank you so much for your touch. <laughs> to all of the pastors, to all of the pastors and the deacons and members and friends, when I got up and I saw that rain, <laughs> and I know rain is like snow in Texas. <laughs> and so I said, Lord Jesus, I guess it's going to be me, first lady, first lady, second lady, third lady, and a couple of deacons, and that'll be it. And then I looked up and saw you, and I said, you know what? I'm not the only one who made it through a storm. Just touch your neighbor and say, this isn't the first storm I have to drive through. I've been in storms all of my life. But thanks be to God, I've made it. Come on, give God some praise in this place today. Listen, I'm, I'm going to keep you standing because once I let you uh, sit down, that'll be it. I've got some product that they'll have in the back. I've got one series called When Others Make Your Life Difficult. This, this sermon, come on, you didn't raise your hand already. You just look like you live with five negative people right now. I want you to think it's a CD in here for every one of them. Uh, but, but that CD, because sometimes um, life uh, throws you that curveball and you're connected to somebody who's difficult and, and you can't get away from them. And, and so that series is not about divorce, it's not about quitting, it's not about walking away. It's about how are you going to handle difficult people that God gave you. I, I tell people this all the time. People want to get married and you want to marry a good person and I understand that, but the thing that God's going to do when you get married is give you somebody who's strong in every area of your weaknesses. Because the purpose of marriage is not so you'll be happy. The purpose of marriage is so you'll be more like God. Marriage is the best evangelistic tool God has ever created. This sermon here is called, Don't Lose Your Head. Don't lose your head. This, this is about when the prophet was chopping down uh, the wood to make, who said that? Come here, brother. Come here. I, you on a job and you come to get it. Well, you cleaned it in the board of health too, man. I tell you. He, he came to church and said, I hope they got some. I'm going to go up there and show them this. I hope. <laughs> this
This, this sermon here is called, and this is this is this one here. This one has gone. I think this has about 500,000 views on on YouTube. The name of this one is called "The Pressure of Being Gifted." Come here, man. No, him, because anybody do here. Y'all give it to him until he calm down. Somebody handle it to him. <laughs> there you go. Come and stay up here. Tell it, stay up here. I'm gonna give. I'm gonna give you something too, and then we'll be done. I'm also. I'm. Re, I'm releasing. Uh, last time I came here, if you, some of y'all were here, if you remember, I released a single called "Give Me More," and uh, y'all supported it so well. June 15th, I'm doing something crazy. I learned to play the guitar. And, and I'm releasing a new single called Holy. And uh, it's coming out June 15th. Here you are. You got the first copy. It'll be coming out on June 15th. Um, I, I, can't, I can't wait to see it. Everybody I, I let hear that song says it's, uh, it's a song that will reverberate around the world. And uh, it is my prayer that God will bless us to do so. From the book of Esther. Esther chapter number six. I believe if you are ready for a word, God has one in this place today. <laughs> Esther chapter number six, beginning at verse number one. If you got it, say, I got it. If you're still looking, say, hold up. If you don't know where to look, Dr. James is here every Wednesday. <laughs> Probably you sit with Dr. James for five minutes, you will know everything about the Bible. She is a genius, amen. I know what good preaching is. Sometimes people preach at the conferences and I might not know what they're saying. I just look at her and she's shaking her head. I'm like, amen. Esther chapter 6, the Bible says, on that night, the king could not sleep, and he commanded to bring the book of records of the chronicles, and they were read before the king. And it was found written that Mordecai had told Bigdata uh, and to rest two of the things that the king's chamberlains and the doorkeepers had said, who sought to lay hands on the king Azarevus. The king said, what honor and dignity hath done been done to Mordecai for this? Then said the king's servant that ministered unto him, there is nothing done for him. And the king said, well, who's in the court? Now, Haman, everybody say Haman. Haman, Haman was come into the outward court of the king's house to speak unto the king to hang Mordecai on the gallows that he had prepared for him. If, I, if you don't hear nothing, nothing else I say, I just want you to remember that he prepared the gallows for him. He prepared, prepared the gallows for him. The king's servant said unto him, Behold, Haman standeth in the court. And the king said, Let him come in. So Haman came in, and the king said unto him, What shall be done unto the man whom the king delighteth to honor? Now Haman thought in his heart, Well, of course it's me. Of course he doesn't want to honor anybody but me. And so since I think it's me, king, let me tell you how I think we should honor him. Let the royal apparel be brought which the king used to wear. And the horse that the king used to ride and the, the crown that the king used to wear on his head. And let his apparel and the horse be delivered to the hand of one of the king's most noble princesses. That they may array the man with all whom the king delighted to honor and bring him on horseback through the street of the city. Let's throw a parade for him and proclaim before him, thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delighted to honor. Then the king said, Haman, you show right. Make haste and do everything you said, but not for you. Do it for Mordecai. I want you to go back up to verse number four. 
Now Haman was come out into the outward court of the king's house to speak unto the king. Really what he was going to do is he was going to the king's house at this very moment to ask for permission to hang Mordecai. I'm telling you right now, there's a devil in your life right now seeking permission. Satan desires to sift you like wheat. But the Bible says, Jesus says, Peter, I prayed for you. You see, sometimes God talks to himself. I want to use for a subject today, the hangman. And I want you to know that there is somebody that is seeking permission to hang you. But they won't be able to do it because God has a hedge of protection already situated about you. Touch your neighbor and say the hangman. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh upon us. It's once again that I come asking for your permission to preach, not to entertain, but to proclaim that you are the Christ. Use me and guide me, order my steps in your word, hide me behind your old rugged cross, cover me in your blood that they may see none of me, but oh Lord, all of you, I'm yours and you're mine. Use me as an instrument and have me to play the tune of your choice. We ask these things in the name of Jesus the Christ and everybody who loves them, shout amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The author of this book is shrouded in mysterious particulars. Some suggest that its author is its main character, Brother Mordecai. There are those who are antagonistic regarding that approach and suggest that this book is like Hebrews. We know not who the author is. We don't know, we do know, possibly we don't. It's not as important as the fact that it is also amazing that we may not know the author, equally amazing that from the beginning word of this book to the ending of this book, the name of God is not mentioned one time. So we may not know its author, consequently the book doesn't name its God. But although we don't know who the author is, and we may not see the name of God in it, there is no doubt that his fingerprints are all on it. You see, sometimes you have to, you have to dust a thing to find out who touched it last. As we dust this scripture uh, with the aura and the oil of the Holy Spirit, we discover that its author may not be prevalent but as God is ever present. This story reminds me of sitting in the kitchen at my grandfather's house watching the soap operas. I hated every second of it. As the world was turning, he was our guiding light. If you're not careful, you'd end up in a general hospital. <laughs> I used to hate the drama of the soap operas. Then I grew up and started reading the scriptures, recognized it was one book full of drama. This book goes right in line with that synopsis. There is a king uh, who initiates himself on the scene of the book initially. His name is Azarerus. And he throws this 
this lavish party. He has this party, and he invites everybody to come to the party. He would show off his wealth for six months at a time, and then he would have this party at the end, and as he had this party, he called everybody together and summoned everybody together. He had a queen named Vashti, and he says to the queen, he says, I want you to come to the party so that I can show off how beautiful you are. I want to show everybody that I got game and I was able to pull a legal tender. And I want to show everybody that, that I've got the most beautiful girl in the world. And, and Vashti starts the first feminist movement. She says, I will not. I will not come and be paraded around like a piece of meat. You're not going to flash me around as if I don't have substance, as if I don't have a heart. I'm more than a pretty face. I, I can think. I will not attend the party. And, and, and as Herrera said, so be it. If you don't want to come, you don't have to come, but understand that the rejection of my summons also uh, will add to the elimination of your position. You know, there are some people that when you don't jump when they tell you to jump, uh, when, when you don't come when they want you to come, they don't see the value of who you are because you don't respond to who they are at that moment. It's difficult to respond to somebody who's never the same. I wouldn't have a problem responding to who you are, but who you are is not who you were. And so when you find out who you are, let me know so I can respond to that. She doesn't come. She doesn't come. The king says, oh, all right, well, that's fine. You must, you, you must not know who I am. When I say jump, you, you're supposed to say how high. That's fine. Don't worry about it. You don't have to come. He goes to the princess and he asks for advice. He says, what shall we do? They say, first of all, let's banish her. But second of all, we got to get a hold on this because some of the other women are looking. Some of the other women are looking, and, and if we don't get a hold of this, all the other women, see, they got their own interests. They say, all the other, you got to handle your woman, because if you don't handle your woman, we're going to have to handle our woman. Y'all, you see what I'm saying? He's, so, so they say, listen, you, you've got to do something, because all of the other women are going to start to reject us. The, the other women are going to start uh, to not listen to our authority. You've got to banish her. The king says, that's exactly what we will do, but I can't be womanless. I've got to find a replacement. So I want you to do me a favor. Go and get all of the young fair virgins and some of the beautiful women and, and go get them and bring them to me. Y'all following me so far? I, I'm trying to show you something. Don't, don't, don't miss this because when you read this scripture, you have a tendency to believe that this story happens in isolation in a vacuum. But what God does in this text is he initiates and illuminates and gives us a display that sometimes he uses miracles to solve a problem. And other times he suspends miracle maneuverability and introduces providential procedure. He says, for this case, I'm not going to use a miracle. For this case, I'm going to use providence. Everybody say providence. Providence is a compound word, pro, before Video to see God gives things beforehand, providence. He sees to it beforehand, watch this, that the solution is already created before the problem. Don't, don't miss this because I'm just setting it up so you'll see how, your, how good your God is. He always has a solution and then there is a problem. Most people think that there are problems and then God reacts with a solution. Well, to, to, to think that God reacts with a solution at the time you have a problem would be to isolate your God and to take him out of eternity's past and put him into chronos and chronology. God does not operate in time. He rides on time. He never did anything in time. God, Arthur Pink said, God is so big that he has a watch pocket. It's the size of the earth. He says, he says watch this. He says, God sees to it beforehand that there is a solution before there was a problem. That, 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 that when Noah created the ark, it had never rained. So God had Noah build a solution before there was ever a problem. Before, before man had ever sinned in the garden, God had already had Jesus Christ to ensure that there would be a solution before there was a problem. 
Now, I know that historicity would teach us that Jesus came in John, that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, that may be true that John introduces us to him uh, parenthetically through the Scripture, but there is a Jesus all the way in back in Genesis chapter 1. For the Bible says, in the beginning, God said to us, let us create man in our own image and after our likeness. And, and the Bible says that the Spirit of God hovered over the waters, which is why I tell people when Peter stepped out of the boat, he did not walk on the water. He was actually walking on the Spirit. Jesus Christ was there before there was sin. Noah created an ark before there was rain. And God, Provedeo, had providence to make sure that all of what was happening in the life of Mordecai was a setup for a comeback. Give your neighbor a high five and say, your setback is a setup for your comeback. I don't know who I'm talking to that's sitting in the potter's house right now. And I don't know who's watching online right now, but I came to tell you real quickly be not weary in well-doing, for you will reap a harvest if you faint not. Do I, is there anybody in here that knows that you've come too far for God to turn around now and that God has done too much in your life for you to give up now and that, that God, they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength and mount up with wings like eagles? I came to tell that about 2,000 of you all, just hold on a little while. It might not make sense right now. You may not understand what God is doing right now, but God is working behind the scenes through your hangman to make sure that you go from the back of the line to the front of the line. Holler back at me. The Bible says that he throws a party. Vashti doesn't show up. The Jews have now been exiled into Persia. Azarius is a Persian king. He's looking for a replacement. Now, of all of the beautiful Persian women that are available, the one that he picks is a Jewish girl who's in exile, who so happens to be the niece of Mordecai, who's a surrogate father after the death of the father. Now, you see two things happening at the same time. They both are exiles roaming in this Persian land, and now you see an elevation happening because Mordecai goes from being an exile to the chief minister, and now Esther goes from being an exile to the new queen. What Esther did not know is that there was somebody in her position that God was already making a way for them to get out of the way so she could step into her new season. I came to tell somebody in here today that God is getting ready to induce an Esther season over your life. Somebody is living in your house right now. Somebody is driving your car right now. But the only thing they are doing is knocking it down so it can get in your price range. Who am I talking to in here today? You have seen your husband already, but God is allowing life to knock him down so that when you find him and he finds you, he will be shaped in every area that you need him to be shaped in. I don't know who I'm talking to, but God is working behind the scenes to make sure that when it is your season, you got enough sense to know when it's your time. Give your neighbor a high five and say, it's my season, it's my time. Esther goes from being in exile to sitting on the throne next to her king. Who am I talking to? Look at your neighbor and say, I'm going from an apartment to a house. You don't, I don't know how I'm going to get there from there to here. I don't know how I'm going to go from catching a bus to owning a bus company. I don't know how I'm going to go from getting my hair done to owning a salon. I don't know how I'm going to go from being where I am to where God wants me. But it's not my business of how I'm going to get there. All I need to know is when God says go, I need to be ready. Slap your neighbor and say, get ready. As a matter of fact, don't get ready. Stay ready. So when God calls your name, y'all, I wish I had some ready folk in the potter's house. I wish I had somebody in this place that knew that this is your time.
Esther goes from rejection to royalty in a moment. You see, sometimes when you're rejected, you feel like nobody wants you. Sometimes when you're rejected, you feel like God has forgotten about you. But David will tell you that rejection is a container. Sometimes God rejects you or allows others to reject you so that nobody will have fingerprints on his blueprints. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sometimes God is doing something in your life. He keeps you away from everybody because if your father would have raised you, you, you would have thought like him. Y'all just... If, if, if you would have grew up in that house you were trying to grow up in, you'd be like all your other sisters and brothers that are strung out on drugs right now. If you grew up in a house that you wanted to grow up in, you would not have the grit and the grind that you have right now. If you grew up rich, you wouldn't know how to take sugar and grits and put toast in the oven and put some butter on it and sprinkle some sugar and cinnamon on Do I have anybody who knows how to take Roman noodles, cut some hot dogs up in it and pour some? You didn't learn that in our mansion. You learned that it oh you know how to make it because you didn't know how you was gonna make it you know how to make it happen because you remember a moment in time when the lights were about do I have anybody in here <laughs> Esther and Mordecai are exiles and now they're being elevated at the same time because God is proficient at smuggling a deliverance into a dilemma. Oh, I wish I, oh God. Y'all don't miss this. God will sometimes smuggle a deliverance into a dilemma. You'll be going through a dilemma not knowing that God has a deliverance inside of the dilemma. Oh, I wish I had about 50 people to give somebody else a high five and say, that's good news for me. I can pick them up and put them down right here. I can shout all the way to the point. You mean to tell me all the hell I've been going through was God's way of getting me to the next level? You mean to tell me every liar was getting me one inch or closer to the truth? You mean to tell me all of those bad relationships was 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 preparation for the for the thing God had? You mean to tell me I was broke so that I could become rich? You mean to tell me, oh, I, now I get it. Let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say... Slap somebody and say it was a setup. <laughs> the entire time, what you thought was rejection was preparation. The entire time, every tear you were crying. God was pushing you towards destiny. Every opportunity you thought that the devil had taken away from you, God was saying, not yet. Not yet. It's not that you're not ready for the opportunity. The opportunity is not yet ready for you. I got to put some more ingredients into this contraption so that when you get it, it'll be full grown. Esther, come on, sit in your seat. It ought to be warm. I had the other person renting it for you. This is your Canaan. And I had somebody in it to make sure that the roads were already paved when you arrived. Had somebody in it already to make sure that you can get houses that you did not build. Had somebody in it to make sure that you could get vineyards that you did not plant. That's why you need to stop being mad at your enemies. They're building stuff so you can get there faster. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Esther. It's your time. So he comes in and Esther walks in and she becomes the king. And now, now, now you see this providence. Mordecai is the chief minister. He has God's heart. Esther is now the queen. She has his heart. Look at God maneuvering his way into Persia. You, you see him? Do you see him? 
So he, he, he's not just going to kick the door down. He's an expert at miracle maneuverability. He finds his way into Persia through the heart of the king two times, through his heart with his wife and through his heart with his chief minister. And Mordecai and, and Esther now are being elevated at the same time. Now, 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 but there is an always an antagonist to every good story. Just when you think everything should be going well, the devil always got his hand in the mix. Anybody know that old devil? He always shows up when you don't need him to show up. I mean, devil, I needed you to show up when the job was paying me full time. I don't need you to show up when they cut me down to three-quarter time. I, I don't need you to show up when I'm sick. I don't need you to show up when my mom's not feeling well. I don't need you to show up when I'm at the hospital feeding my father through a tube. I don't need you to show up when my children are misbehaving. You should have showed up when everything was calm, but the devil does not show up when everything is going well. He shows up when you just feel like giving up. And at the same time, Esther and Mordecai being elevated, there was another brother going through the ranks. His name is Haman. Haman the hangman. He's got an executioner's license. And, and everybody that the king needs to take care of, Haman say, I got you, dog. Don't worry about that. You go ahead on and be the king. I'll kill everybody that come up against you. Haman's pulling levers and levers and, and hanging everybody. And, 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 and here he is now. He's being elevated. Now, you got to understand that he also has another problem. He hates Jews. Guess what Mordecai is? A Jew. Not only is he a Jew, he's an elevated Jew. And Haman is out here trying to annihilate the Jews so much, the Bible says that, that Mordecai runs out into the street and begins to put ashes and sackcloth on himself. He's so frustrated at the plight of his people. And now, just as Haman is looking to annihilate all of the Jews, one keeps popping above the surface. After all that he's done to subvert all of the Jews, there is just one guy who has an anointing on him that no matter what Haman does, he keeps slipping out of the grip of the hangman. And, 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 and now he's being elevated and Haman says, I tell you what, I'm going to take a page from Nebuchadnezzar's book. I want everybody to bow to me. The Bible says everybody bows except for Mordecai. You know, when you have an anointing, you don't have to bow to nobody. Oh, I came to tell somebody in here today that you are so anointed, you don't have to play politics. You are so anointed, you don't have to subvert. You are so anointed, you don't have to manipulate. Slap your neighbor and say, I'm going to win just being me. Oh, I wish I had somebody here say, I'm going to win just being me. That means if my hair is nappy, I'm going to win with a nappy head. If I'm short, I'm going to win under five feet. If I'm skinny, I'm a win thin. I wish I had somebody in here that knew it doesn't matter what you look like on the outside. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I wish I had about 500 people that to find somebody and encourage them and say, you can win just like you are. All you have to do is speak like you speaking, walk like you walking, act like you acting, sing like you singing, talk like you talk, because God is not looking for somebody who looks like you want to be. God is looking for somebody who looks like what you ought to be. Slap somebody and say, I'm going to win just like this. You don't need a Bentley to win. You can win in a Corolla. You don't have to live on a hill to win. You could be under a bridge right now. I'm telling you, I serve a God that can come and find you where you are, dust you off, put your feet on straight street, and have you from an exile to experience. Do I have anybody in this place? Matter of fact, I want to give you about 15 seconds to start praising God in advance that you're getting ready to go from where you are to a matter of fact, give your neighbor a high five and say, here's the new me. I'm blessed and highly favored. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and never beneath.
devil should have killed me when he had a chance. He should have killed me when I was on blood pressure pills. He should have killed me when I was in the hospital. But he messed around and let me get to the potter's house. And now I find out who the son sets free. Mordecai has an anointing. The purpose of oil is to create an environment where friction is impossible. So now that he has an oil on him, every time Haman tries to grab him, the rope won't work because he's anointed. I, do you know what should have happened to you already? Good God, do you know where you already should be? Do you know that you ought to be dead somewhere? Do you know that you should already be in an insane asylum with your hands wrapped around your back, but you made it out? Oh, I wish I had somebody who knew that you had some oil. Slap somebody and say, I slipped out of that thing. The devil, oh, he almost had me, but I slipped out of that thing. That's why when you got in that car accident and everybody looked at that car and said, how did you get out of that? Look at him and say, the oil. I gotta get out of here. So, I'm gonna prove to you, I'm gonna prove to you that God's got your back. All right, D Day has arrived. Haman is now walking up the steps to the palace, getting ready to seek permission to hang Haman, Mordecai. And as he's going up to seek permission, the Bible says the day before, point number one, God gives the king insomnia. He cannot sleep. And he says, since I cannot sleep, somebody go and get the chronicles and bring them to me. It was like a presidential briefing. It would help him to make better decisions on what was going on in the king and the prophets. He says, go read me the chronicles. And they began to read to him the chronicles and say, on this day, that happened. On this day, that happened. On this day, that happened. And the other day, when you were getting ready to come through the door, there were two doorkeepers that were going to lay hands on you and kill you, but Mordecai saw it and he foiled the plot. If Azarius would have had a good night's sleep that night, Mordecai would have been asleep forever. So God gives him insomnia and keeps him up. So that way, when it was time for him to die, it would not happen in his sleep. It happened while he was awoke. And the Bible says that he, they began to read to him the Chronicles, and they said, no, this guy Mordecai saved your life. There were two guys that were standing at the door, and they were going to kill you. Can I help you real quickly? The devil does his best business at the door. The Bible says that we've got three doors, three gates. We've got our ear gate, our eye gate, and our mouth gate. Those are the three ways that the enemy is trying to get in your life right now. 
I bet you if you look at it right now, there are people trying to say things to you that, that, would, that would subvert your energy. There, there are things that you're seeing right now that you don't know what to do, and there are things that are coming out of your mouth that you don't normally say, but I came to tell somebody, give your neighbor a high five and say, guard your doors, guard your doors. Make sure you don't hear anything. As a matter of fact, I want you to stop having conversations with all of these negative people, and I don't care if it is your mama. I don't care if it is your sister. Matter of fact, I'm trying to get somewhere. We can be related, but I refuse to be depressed. <laughs> I'll come, I'll come to dinner on Sunday, but I will not come to your pity party on Monday. I will reverse my curse and make sure that I get myself out of all of the negative situations in my life. I'm tired of seeing negativity. I'm tired of hearing negativity. I'm tired of seeing, do I have anybody who's tired of it? You know it is possible to be related to people and still not relate with them. I don't have to be depressed because we're kidding. When you stop depressing me, I'll show back up. Have you ever been around people, every time you come around, they always say, how you doing? Well, well how, how you sleep last night? Not good. How can you not sleep every night for a year? You be dead. You sleeping good sometimes. Have you ever talked? How you sleep? It was like, I ain't sleep at all. How you ain't never slept? You got to be careful because sometimes we walk through doors and we call it a blessing, but you don't understand that there are two, three, four assassins waiting on you to walk through your doors. King has insomnia. He can't sleep. And now, Mordecai is alive. You know, I thought about that, and I came to tell y'all, God's got a blessing so big for you that somebody going to have to lose sleep for you to get it. Some of y'all just put a loan in at the bank. Last night, the banker was up with your name on his. <laughs> just touch your name and say, I got a blessing so big. Somebody's going to have to lose sleep for me to get it. There's a banker right now, a creditor right now, somebody who's looking at your name at an, on an application, somebody who's looking at your name on a certificate. There's somebody right now that can't sleep. Your name keeps popping up. What is it about Johnny? What is it about Mary? What is it about Susie? I don't know who they are. God's going to keep somebody up until they bless you. Matter of fact, I want you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm going to shout so that you can stay woke because you might be the one God's going to use. I dare you to wake up every dead person in your section and shout until they get up because it might be them that God is going to use. Touch your neighbor and say, this is a no sleeping section. Matter of fact, look down your whole row and say, if you own this row, this is a praising section because if God is blessing your neighbor, it means he's in the neighborhood. If you got somebody who looks blessed, you ought to start jumping. Because if God did it for them. Look at him and say, are you blessed? Are you blessed? Are you blessed? If your neighbor's blessed, it means God is in the neighborhood. Somebody ought to start giving God some glory. Tell them you're going to learn today. You're going to learn today. My blessing is connected to you. You're not going to sit here and sleep. Somebody going to wake up until I get what's mine. Somebody going to wake up until the blessing is released in my life. Somebody's going to wake up until the, oh, the windows of heaven open and the. If somebody messes with you, God will disturb their sleep. You ain't got to worry about it right now. Right now, they woke, eyes open. Don't know why. Because you can't mess with a king's kid. I wish I had somebody. I might not be perfect, but I'm his. I might have been wrong, but I'm his. I might not be what you think I should be, but I'm his. Somebody shout, I'm his. <laughs> mess around with me, you be woke till next year.
I gotta let y'all go. You know, and I didn't mean to say this, but you know what I like about Mordecai? When, uh, when, he, when they recorded what happened, they recorded the names of the two dudes who tried to get him. So I like Mordecai because he don't have the ministry of somebody said. Now I'm gonna come through, I'm gonna come up through here and get some of y'all mad and I'm gonna hit it and quit it. I'm gonna be on out of here. But 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 he don't have the ministry of somebody said, I can't stand folk who come and tell me what they said, but can't tell me who they are. I ain't scared of y'all, ain't no sense you getting quiet. How you got enough nerve to tell me what they said but can't tell me who they is? Pardon my ebonic relapse. And then my second question is, why are they comfortable? <laughs> Saying what they said to you. You know why? Because loyalty is a grown man's game. Kids can't be loyal. You got to be grown to be loyal. You got to be grown to say, let me tell you, Bishop, such and such said such and such, and you can tell such and such that I said they said. <laughs> tell them I live at 9645. I don't go to sleep to 1030. I can't stand folks that are always talking about what they said. And then why are they comfortable saying it to you? Because wherever you are complicit, that's where your honor goes. So if you conceal the liar, then you care more about the liar than the person you're telling the truth to. That joker said, it was him, and it was him. And you can tell them that I said it. How many of y'all got that in you? How Oh, I know this is a potter's house. I know this is a bishop's crowd. How many of y'all got that kind of gangster in you? Just touch your name and say, I'm saved, but I ain't delivered. I, I, I'm on my way. I, I still got a little hood left in me. Now, I, I, I know the Bible, and I know how to pray, and, and, and I got a nice little living room set, but if you bag me into a corner, I know how to say isn't. And I sure enough know how to say ain't. Can I, Lord, I gotta get, can you stop expecting loyalty from people who don't give you honesty? <laughs> Y'all gonna make me just forget about my whole little sermon. Can you stop? expecting loyalty from people who can't give you honor. If they can't be honest, how are they going to be loyal? <laughs> King has insomnia. Now he has an inquiry. Okay, Mordecai saved my life. What has been done for him? What y'all do about it? Look at all the jealous folk. Nothing. We didn't do nothing. That's what he posed to do. He said, it's not our custom to allow these kinds of acts to go unrewarded. It is our custom in Persia to reward people, especially at this level. Uh, who's in the courts? Entered into his gates with thanksgiving. Entered into his courts with praise. So there's a difference between the gates and the courts. See, I can get through the gates with thanksgiving, but I can't get into the courts until I praise. Because thanksgiving will get you on the premises, but praise will get you the promises. He says, so who's out in the courts making decisions? It just so happens this day that the person who's in the courts that have to make the decision on what's about to befall and be bestowed upon Mordecai, is the hangman. Haman is in the courts today. But Haman doesn't know that the king makes a decree that he wants to honor somebody. He says, we're just going to honor somebody. 
and I need some advice on what we should do for that somebody. Haman says, well, of course he wants to honor me. Who would, who would ever he be talking about? There is no one greater than me. I'm the hangman. I've done everything he's ever asked me to do. Of course, this is for me. King, I tell you what we should do. You know that robe, that Gavinci robe that you had? I want you to pull that one out. <laughs> I want you to go and get your Prada. <laughs> crown and I want you to go get your Ferrari horse and I want you to go get it not only are we gonna get it we're gonna have a parade we're gonna ride whoever you talking about now I don't know who you talking about <laughs> but whoever you talking about we gonna honor him brother King because that's what you supposed to do we're gonna honor him and we're gonna have a parade for him in his honor and, and, oh, and by the way, I think that you should have one of your princes to be the one to bestow the honor. That's what I think you ought to do. That's what I, yep, that's it. That's my recommendation. So say you, king. King says, you know what? Do that. Do all that. Don't let none of what you said fall off. But here's the caveat. Do it for Mordecai. Oh, I came to tell somebody in here that God had your enemy plan your elevation. Slap your neighbor and say the devil did it. That girl that don't like you at the job is the reason why you're about to be promoted. God is using somebody beneath you to bless you. Do all that. And some. But do it for Mordecai. You know, sometimes God will use somebody else to open up a thing for you. The Bible says that when Elijah was by the brook, that he commanded a raven to feed him. But you do know that the beak of a raven is not strong enough to pick through the flesh of an animal. So how can a raven who does not have the ability to kill nor to, re to get flesh from an animal take it to somebody who needs it? Well, what a raven does is he flies. And he waits on the wolves to catch it. And when the wolves catch it and bite it and open it up, then it goes down because even God makes a way for a scavenger and uses somebody else to open it up for him. If God will open it up for the raven, he'll, oh, I wish I had somebody in here that'll start praising God right now. You thought it was going to be too tough to get in. You thought it was going to be too tough, but God sent me to tell you that he already sent somebody to open it up for you. Give your neighbor a high five and say it's an open season for you. It's an open door for you. It's an opportunity for you. And God has already used somebody else to open it up. Do all that. But it isn't for you. It's for Mordecai. Who? Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? I said, Mordecai. Huh? You talking about that cat that didn't buy? Oh! The Bible says he went home and told his wife he was sick. Do you know how sick your enemies get? Watching God promote you. Matter of fact, you need to just carry Alka-Seltzer in your pocket every time you pass by an enemy. There you go. I know you're going to be sick. There you go. 
There's somebody sick right now. That's why they won't call you. That's why they won't show up. That's why, oh, it was traffic. I couldn't make it. No, you were sick. Because I have an announcement. Everybody, I need you to announce. I need you to proclaim that Mordecai is being elevated. I see a shadow because it's the same way Jesus came in. The Bible says that John proclaimed that there was one coming. You see, because every time God elevates you, there's always an announcement that comes first. I came to make an announcement. Y'all just missed what I said. Every time God gets ready to elevate you, he sends somebody to announce it. I came all the way to Dallas to make an announcement. It's your time. I came to make an announcement. It's your season. I came to make an announcement that you are not the head. To tell you are the head. I came to make an announcement that you are no longer the borrower. You are the lender. I came to make an announcement that it's your season. Matter of fact, would you help me help somebody and tell them the announcement is here. It is time for you to walk into your season of elevation. Somebody shout, this is my year. Now, while I'm announcing, you can't just be sitting there like, okay, that's cool. If I announce it, you better shout about it. If I announce it, you better give God glory. If I announce it, you better give God some praise. Do I have anybody in here that'll shout hallelujah? That's real cute. That's real cute. That's real cute. Because what you're thanking God for is what you already had. This is not your old position. This is a new position. So since it's a new position, you're going to have to have a new praise. Let everything. Somebody shout! Somebody just said, tell your neighbor, I got an announcement, I got an announcement, I got an announcement. By the time this year is over, you won't be single anymore. I got an announcement, I got an announcement. By the time this year is over, you're going to be a millionaire. I got an announcement, I got an announcement, I got an announcement. I know you lost your hair in chemo, but God told me to tell you the next time you go back to the doctor, they won't be able to find anything. I got an announcement, I got an announcement, I got an announcement, I got an announcement. Blood pressure is skipping over a generation. I got an announcement. Hypertension is skipping over. I got an announcement. God's about to elevate you. I got an announcement, your kids are coming off of drugs. I got an announcement, your nephew is getting out of jail. I got an announcement. The loan has been approved, I've got an announcement. The marriage is going to survive, I've got an announcement. I just saw something. I just saw something. The king has insomnia. The king has an inquiry. After his insomnia and his inquiry, he's about to give Mordecai an inheritance. Okay. How are you an heir when you're not in the bloodline? Inheritance. I can't be an heir because I'm not related. You don't have to be related when you are anointed. <laughs> go give the go give Mordecai all of what you said. All that. I need you to take all of that and I need you to give it to him. But I love what God says next. He says, I know you hate him, so I'm not going to let you give it to him when you want to. Because some people will have stuff for you, but they'll hold it as long as they can. 
the king says, God says to the king, make haste. In other words, do it. Oh, I came to tell somebody that I ain't talking about next year. I ain't talking about next month. Slap your neighbor and say, right now. I wish I had somebody who will praise God right now. For right now, miracle. Let everything that has breath. Somebody shout right now, right now, right now, right now, not later, but now, not next year, but now, not next month, right now. I decree and declare that by the time you get to the parking lot, the glory will already be released on your life. By the time you get home, the miracle will already be done. Matter of fact, your husband is watching online and you've been praying for him. He's shouting in the living room because God is doing God's about to take you from the rope to the robe now. Haman, permission denied. You cannot hang Mordecai, but you can bless him. King, nope, I can't. I can't do it. I found a loophole in the contract. You said that the person who was going to bless him had to be a prince. I'm not a prince. I'm an executioner. No problem. I wrote the contract. I can make an addendum. I now promote you to be a prince. Which means that sometimes God has to elevate your enemies to bless you. Don't get mad when you see your enemies getting blessed because the gap between you and them is so wide that God has to lift them up so they can reach you. I'm going to make you a prince so that my providence can be upheld. Now go do what I said. And he goes to bless him. But after the king's insomnia and his inquiry and his passing of the inheritance, let's skip now. And lastly, look at Mordecai's integrity. Because now he's blessed. And two things happen. The Bible says Haman gets an attitude and goes home and tells his wife. Gets an attitude. Starts hating on what happened to Mordecai. Mordecai got blessed and went back to the same position that he was in before he got blessed. See, that's what integrity is. Can you do your old job with new accolades? <laughs> Mordecai could have said, I'm too big for that now. I got too many members to go shake hands. I got, my company's too big to go out and do customer service. I don't do, ca I don't do the cash register anymore. I'm beyond that. God says, I'm testing you to make sure that you don't allow your inheritance to injure your integrity. <laughs> Can you go back to the place where you were hurt and operate differently because of what God is doing in your life? 
Because God says, I can't send an old you to a new place. If you really knew what was happening, you wouldn't be depressed. If you really knew what was happening, you wouldn't be talking about church hurt. Well, the devil has run more Christians off from churches with that church hurt terminology than anything I've ever seen in my life. They hurt you at your job. You'll be there tomorrow at 8. Every time I go to the grocery store and see how much they charge for milk, I get hurt. But I go back. <laughs> Hurts my feelings how much bread costs these days. You go to the dentist, they hurt you. You'll be back in six months. Goes back right where he was. Richer than he ever been, but more humble than he had ever been. Goes right back and says, Mama, I, I'm just here to serve. I'm not going to let my blessing cause me to not be one. You know? If you knew what was going on, you, you wouldn't be as depressed as you are. He's, he's using all of this. The story closes. Haman builds the gallows to hang Mordecai. But keep reading. He actually built his own coffin. Not only does he hang by a thread. <laughs> that tell you who was at church two weeks ago. <laughs> But 10 of his sons hang from the same rope. What the devil meant for evil, God is going to turn it around for your good. The hangman in your life ought to teach you that the rope they have for you is for them. Don't you fret. Don't you worry. A thousand shall fall. Ten thousand. But none shall come nigh. There ought to be somebody here right now that ought to begin to praise God that you faced that rope, you faced those obstacles, you faced depression, you faced suicidal thoughts, you faced it all, but is there anybody in here that's glad that you made it? Do I have any survivors in the potter's house? Somebody ought to begin to praise him right now. Do I have any survivors? I don't feel no ways tired. I'm going to lift your hands in this place. I've come too far from where I start, started from. Nobody told me that the road yeah, 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 yeah. Listen, I don't want I don't want to get you in a rhythm. I want to keep you in worship. Just lift your hands wherever you are. Lift your hands wherever you are. No weapon formed against you yeah, 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 yeah. shall prosper. No, 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 no. It won't work. This is my favorite part. God will do just what he said he would do. 
He will stand by His word. Anybody know He'll come through? No weapon. Come on and lift those hands in this place. Formed against you, yeah. Shall prosper. Somebody lift those hands and say, God will do just what he said he would do. Anybody know he'll stand by his word? Ooh, he'll come through. Could have been me. With no food, no clothes. Anybody know? I could have been left alone without a friend or just another number with a tragic end. But he did not see fit now to let none of these things be. But every day by his power, he keeps on keeping me. Oh, somebody ought to shout, thank you, Lord, for all you've done. It could have been me. Oh, somebody's about to catch the hope. Somebody ought to catch on in here. Outdoors with no food and no clothes I could have been left alone without a friend or just another number with a tragic end but he did not see fit no. to let none of these things be every day by his power he keeps on keeping me. Somebody ought to lift those hands there and say, thank you, Lord, for all you have done. Hey. I said, thank you, Lord. For all you have done for me, I gotta let you go, but I hear, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. Anybody know we've got a friend in them? What privilege to care. Not just some things, but Oh, oh, what peace we often, oh, what needless pain we bear. And it's not because he doesn't love us, it's all because.
I don't know who you are. I don't know where you're standing. I don't know where you're sitting. But there is a move of the Holy Ghost in this place. I believe that some of you all have been facing the gallows all of your life. Hanging on by a thread. You're blessed financially, but you still feel trapped. And see, some people would think, oh, because you have what you have, you ought not have any problems. That's, that's not true. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what you have. What matters is who has you. And no matter what Haman is doing in your life, whether you live on a hill or at the bottom of a mountain, under a bridge, it doesn't matter. God is a reward of those who diligently seek him. Be not weary in your well-doing. Hug your neighbor and tell him, God's got your back. 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 Everything, everything. Hug somebody else. Tell them everything. Or you ought to span across the aisle and find somebody who looks like they need a touch. Tell them everything, everything, everything. You ought to find somebody who looks like they need a touch from the Lord. Whisper in their ear. There is nothing that's too hard for God. Everything. One last time, one last time, one last time. No. Everything. God, some praise in this place today. Hallelujah. Come on, you ought to give him praise. Hallelujah. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, he is worthy to be praised. Rejoice in the Lord after you rejoice. Again, I say rejoice. Smuggling deliverances into your dilemmas. It looks bad right now, but it ain't going to end like that. <laughs> You're going to have the last laugh. I will never, ever forget. I was in Fort Wayne, Indiana. I went over to Tacoma, Washington to get my master's degree in theology, and I saw a man, and when I saw that man, he said, God told me to tell you that you're going to be the next pastor of my church. At that time, I was pastoring a church that I started with five people in the town that only had 5,000 African Americans. I started the church. I was 21 years old. I was a senior in college at the same time. I was so Baptist. I named the church the Pilgrim Rest Missionary Baptist Church <laughs> at 21. My first five charter members were seven, between the ages of 72 and 93. Everybody came. So now everybody came to church sleep. They would sleep before service started. <laughs> I remember our first offering was $12.15. I pastored that church, never got paid a salary until after the 12th month. My first salary was $50 a month. Hmm. Then they moved me up to 250, and I thought, "Ooh wee, I'm balling." 
Saloni May Hill, Jesse Henderson, Vanessa Henderson, Vanita Early. I remember them. I remember I had to bury them, and I, I remember crying. Being in my 20s doing funerals like that. Started that church. I never will forget, though. I was in California preaching, and I came back, and the water main had broken in the basement, and I got back. The little church that we was renting, $500 a month, had eight feet of water in the basement. Could no longer have service, didn't know what we were going to do. What was I going to do with this $12,000 a year enterprise? It was all I had. I remember a young man told me, he said, he was preaching. I won't say his name. He said to me, he says that both wisdom and money are answers. And he looked at me and he said, money answers all things. And he read Psalms 112 to me and I began to recite Psalms 112. And then he said, I need a $112 seat. Now, you're going to ask somebody for $112 to get paid $50 a month? You, you must have the wrong person. And then he proceeds to see as if he read my mind and he said, and, and some of y'all are thinking, how are we going to do it? Now, see, that means nothing in here. When I say $112, you have to imagine I'm in a town where there are not enough people to fill up this church. You, you see the difference. And when he said $112, we heard $1,112. That's what we heard. And he asked for it. And what I did is I took $112. I put it on the altar. And I remember saying, God, can you use this $112 to bless this church? Because listen, this $112 offering was larger than the whole month's budget at the time. So I gave it. The next Sunday, in walks a couple that owns a beauty shop and a barber shop. They walk in and they say, oh, this is our grandmother. She told us about you. And we just came over here to make sure that our grandmama is in good hands. Yeah. Not knowing that those two people had six kids who came with them that day. So the church doubled. <laughs> I'll never forget. I preached a sermon called, I don't want to be a player no more. First Corinthians chapter 13. <laughs> you know, when Paul talks about putting away childish things. They joined the church. Kids joined the church where the kids brought their friends and brought their boyfriends. Then another couple came in and they were barbers and, and they owned beauty shops because you know they were in the community. And before you know it, in the first year, the church had grown to 120 people. We went a whole year with five. I planted $112, 120 in the next 12 months. Listen to me. The only thing that can break a cycle is a seed. Every woman in here who's ever had a baby, it was a seed that broke your cycle. Think about it, because since y'all won't act like I ain't said that. Let me see. <laughs> when we stand before you and, and we raise offerings, a lot of people say, oh, my God, there they go with that again. I remember one lady came up to me and she said, she said, uh, she said, Pastor, it just bothered me. You, you talked about the offering for, for 20 minutes. She said, it just vexed my spirit. I said, you know what vexes my spirit? Is that you drove two hours to go to work and worked 40 hours to get it, and it wasn't enough. You did more work to go get what wasn't enough. I spent time trying to show you how to make not enough into more than enough. This is Dallas. The traffic is terrible. <laughs> I remember coming here one time. It took me seven days to go two miles. I started on Sunday. I didn't finish to Monday. I think it was something like that. <laughs> 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 
When we do this, we're not trying to get anything out of you. We're trying to put something in you. You know my testimony. I came, my first desk was a TV dinner tray. I still got it at my house now. Every time I eat, my wife bring out, it's the same tray. Y'all mama had it too, I know it. It was four of them. They were like kind of light colored. <laughs> and, and it came on a little handle thing and it got a little weak, but you keep them trays, don't you? And maybe you got a little towel over now and it's holding your flower or something like that at the house. Them trays lasted forever, didn't they? Still got it to this day. Still to this day. I still, I ate off of it Sunday. I did, on Mother's Day, didn't I, baby? Mm-hmm. Because I didn't mind going back to my old post. I'm going to ask you to do something, and I, I don't really have any anxiety if you can't. It's, it's fine with me. Um, I'm going to tell you what the Lord told me, and, and we're going to go home because we're done. I want, first of all, for me, and I told my wife to do it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give my tithes here today. I'm going to give my tithes here at the Potter's House today because this is my church. This is my bishop. This is my pastor. Lord, that I'm going to give a $1,112 seed because when I started this journey, I did it with 112, and now God has elevated me, so I'm going to do it on another level. If anybody wants to match me and do that. Baby, if you'll bring me that envelope, y'all give a hand to my wife. She's going to come with me. I'll have her stand with me. If, if, you'll, if, you'll, if you'll do that with me, if you'll do that with me, I want, I want those of you who will match us with this $1,112 seed. This is Psalms 112 C. We've done this so many times. God has blessed our life. If you'll, if you'll meet me here at the altar, I want you to meet me here right, right quick. That, and it doesn't, you, no pressure. If you don't want to do it, you don't have to. This is not a have to, this is a want to. The rest of you, a $112 seed, and we're going to leave. It's not a $50 line, it's not a $20 line, it's not a, if you can't do that, get as close as you can, that's fine. But those of you who will, meet me at this altar. Meet me at this altar. And let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Prosperity is having enough divine resources for a divine cause. That's what prosperity is. It's not having a lot of money. It's just having enough to do what God wants you to do with it. When most people tell me I don't have any money, I find out they don't have a plan. If you find a plan, God will give you the money to match that plan. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah. 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 People are still coming from the back. Do me a favor and tell the people who, who are thinking about it, say, hurry up so we can go home. Don't, don't think about it long. Yeah, we're only going to be here as long as you want to be. If you don't have anything, do me a favor. Just give a praise for these who are coming. Just praise God for them who are coming. Hallelujah. It's still coming. It's still coming. One of the reasons why I do this is how many of y'all know that when the bishop is gone, since he's such a high-level preacher and all of that, you know, everything goes down when a, when a person like that is not here. So you know how many people got online today and saw it wasn't him and said, oh, I'm going to stay asleep. Do you know how many people that waited online to see if he was going to stand up before they left their house to come here? And so when everything like that happens, it goes down. But how many of you want to make sure that when he gets back, he can't even feel it? He doesn't even know anything happened because it's our job to hold up his arms. Come on, Potter's House. Hallelujah. We're going to make sure that he knows that God can continue to use him all around the world and that this house, after 20 some odd years, we are mature enough to be able to operate in his absence. Am I right about that? Amen. They're still coming. They're still coming. God bless you. They're still coming. The rest of you getting your $112 gift together and we're going to stand and we're going to give together. We're going to stand and we're going to give together. As a matter of fact, once you get that $112 seat or whatever you're going to give, just stand up wherever you are. The PMTs are getting in order right now. And those of you all who are back there, you need an ink pen? Okay. Um, he got one right here. Let's ask him, can you borrow it? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise him.
who are we praising? And what is he? He's worthy. From the rising. Still coming. God bless you. And. 